Hey guys, welcome back to the shop and we're going to start on our next little piece of the project here for the American Pacemaker compound slide rebuild. So the last video, we went ahead and machined our T-nut and we've got it fitted in here in the top of the compound slide and uh, milled the top off flat. So what I want to do now is go ahead and get the bolt that I want to hold our new uh, D1 tool post down to the uh, top of the compound here. So I've made a drawing and this is what this is what it's going to look like. So it's going to look like uh, sort of a bolt or kind of like a shoulder bolt. And the sizes that I've got picked out for the hex here, this isn't kind of matching any kind of in industry standards, but it's actually uh, more in line to what I have here at the shop. So I've got a piece of two inch 4140 already on the shelf. So we're going to be using this to make our bolt. It'll end up being cut off. We're not going to use the whole length right there. But our bolt itself is going to be a total of seven and a quarter inches long. And we tap this inch and a quarter seven. So that's what our thread's going to be right there. The center of it is going to fit down through the D1 tool post. And we do need to machine this to uh, fit it. So that's going to be a 40 millimeter bore inside the tool post. This will be bored to 40 millimeters. So whenever uh, PV Tools supplies any of their tool posts here for the, the, the multi-fix size, these washers or spacers that, that fit on the top right here, all right, that's where your uh, pointer, just showing this for those that maybe don't remember, you got a pointer that goes on there that shows your uh, position and a spring goes in the groove. Uh, anyway, these are supplied with a small hole with the intentions that you machine this to fit whatever size stud or bolt that you're going to use. All right, so that's that's why this is such a small hole. So we'll bore this out to 40 millimeters or 1.575 inches. And that is the size hole that is through the center of the tool post here. This thing is so big and heavy. All right, so this is a 40 millimeter hole. It's actually just so slightly over, so we'll just machine the shank of our bolt here to uh, 40 millimeters or 1.575 and that should give it a few thousandths uh, clearance through the center of this. All right, and then the flange on the end right there, where we got a we're gonna make it like a flange bolt there. So we'll have a flange that's gonna be two inch diameter, the diameter of our piece of material. So it's gonna look like this on the end of the bolt right there, okay? And I decided to go with uh, one and five eighths hex, the, uh, the the, we'll turn it to uh, one and seven eighths, and then we're going to machine a uh, uh, one and five eighths hex. And one of the reasons I wanted to go with one and five eighths is because I already have two of these one and five eighths uh, wrenches. I used to use this one on the American Pacemaker uh, whenever I was at Motion, that one there. And I've also got a bigger one and five eighths wrench right here. This is a Proto. I believe this is one that I got at the flea market years ago. So we got two of those. So this will these will be the wrenches that we will use for this tool post right there. One and five eighths, and we'll keep those in the toolbox there next to the uh, pacemaker. So that's the job in hand. We'll go down to the lathe and uh, we're gonna get started on this guy and get it machined. All right, so we'll do all of our turning here. We'll, we'll turn our thread 
told our uh, turn our shoulder, get this part finished up, and then once we finish this in, we'll probably just take this to the bandsaw, cut off the extra, and then chuck it back up on our 40 millimeter and finish out the hex end of it there. I'm going to use the uh, Walter Tools WPP20G grade of insert. This is a CNMG 431 and uh, I'm going to try this out on this 4140. This, I've got three grades of uh, Walter carbide that I have been uh, running here recently and uh, seeing how they do on all the materials that I machine compared to some of the other inserts that I've been using for years. So just constantly uh, trying out some of these new tools and uh, seeing what these updated grades of uh, carbide and how they work for me in the shop. So we've got this section turned to our 40 millimeter. We're just going to turn this one down to an inch and a quarter. It's always on the finished pass that, that the material is going to do that. Wadding up and then scratching your surface. Not a big deal, but it's always aggravating. You know, you got to polish that to get those rub marks out of it. Just really frustrating. I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm not really liking the chip control that these inserts are doing. I, it's, it's making a more stringy chip than the ones that I'm used to using. And that's why I always use my tried and true inserts and I'm trying something new to see if there's better solutions out there. So, you know, just trying inserts and seeing how they work. But so far on 4140, it's creating a more stringy chip than what I want it to do. All right, so we're gonna machine a thread relief right here in this corner. This is a quarter inch wide uh, radius tool. Double depth, 185 thousandths. So I usually take it a little bit past that. Let's see here. Try low gear. Try to get in there and get out before it starts chattering. All right. So what we'll do is clean this corner up here.
bit more there. That's just, that shoulder length is gonna be clearance over the top of the uh, T-nut, so it doesn't really matter where that ends up at. Gonna clean that corner up right there nicely. Come over here and clean this side up, and I'm gonna back it out at an angle, just like that. All right, let's go ahead and break this corner too while we're here. What I plan on doing once we chuck it up here to turn our other side, I'll probably just skin this round so that it's all matching with the rest of the bolt there. All right, guys, we're, we're ready to uh, machine our thread. And I think that's gonna work out pretty good. That's a, there's a coarse thread. We're cutting a seven pitch, inch and a quarter seven national coarse. So that everything moves pretty quick with a seven pitch right there. So I've got the machine set. We want AD8, AD8. All right, we're gonna go ahead and scratch it and check it with our thread pitch and um, make verify that we're, that we're correct there. I'll probably just uh, use every number on the half nuts here. All right, and I forgot my pitch gauge down here. The one lesson that I always try to tell everybody is always verify that you're cutting the correct pitch. Whenever you're setting the machine up, make a scratch pass, verify it before you make a mistake like I did in the past. All right, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just try number two. You can see that's lining up. Just so I'm not trying to land on every single line here. I'm just verifying it and showing it to you guys. This is number three lining up, and then we'll go to uh, number four and go on around. You should be able to hit any line on the dial here though, and it lined up. So that's number four. I'm gonna bring it back up here. Let's hit a half. Yep, see it tries to split it there. So it's because of the odd number, You want to hit every other line. So I started with one, so we can hit one, two, three, or four. If you hit the ones in between that, you're going to split your thread. I'm gonna be using my thread triangles to uh, measure the pitch diameter of the uh, thread here. So I've got a max pitch diameter of 1.433 and I've got it written down as a minimum of 1.425. The 1.425 pitch is gonna be your class two minimum. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a tolerance there. We'll probably shoot for right around the 430 range. These can be a little finicky to use, but they work great. They're easier than wires. Once you get the mic squared up over the triangles, it's pretty easy to get your measurement right there. All right, and we right now we're at 75, so we're at 479 right now. So we still got, still got a little ways to go.
Almost there. Getting closer. trying to sneak up on it without taking uh, too much and overshooting my my pitch that I want. If you can get the bottom of the mic on the triangle and then kind of hook in the top to hold it in place, that's how I usually do these triangles here. All right, so we are at 136 and a half. So we've still got a few thousandths. So that's at least about four thousandths that we go. So a couple more uh, very light passes and then some cleanup scratch passes. I think this will bring us down to within our pitch range that we want. I'll go back in there with the radius tool and clean up that radius where the threading tool is uh, touching the bottom of it. make some scratch passes here on this one I'm going to go about a half a thousandth in on the cross slide and see if we can just clean this guy up let's do that one more time basically spring passes you see every time it takes a little bit of material Let's see how close we are there. I get done with this, so I'll show you guys the little chart that I'm using just so that people know I'm not just making this stuff up here. I'm just looking top and bottom to get them about on the same thread in line with each other. All right. So right here we are at you just have to make sure that you are square. Right at one, uh, I'm sorry, 432. So 25, 30, one, so right at 432. So we're in range right there and I think I wanna leave it because that's gonna be your maximum pitch diameter. So I think we'll just leave it at that. Just filed the uh, threads. I made another scratch pass on there, just cleaning it up. I didn't feed in anymore. Just mic it again. We're at uh, 431 on our pitch diameter. So that is telling me that I'm at a class 2A maximum for uh, inch and a quarter seven. All right, so we're good to go right there. All we got now is to do some basic polishing. I wanna, I wanna go ahead and clean up that uh, undercut there with the radius tool again, and then we'll just do some polishing on this. Soften all the edges up, make sure there's no sharp edges, and this part will be finished up. So here's a little better look at the chart that comes with the triangles right here. So this was made by Raul Mike's Tularama. This gives you all of your uh, basic pitch diameters, all of your common, this is for inch, so we don't have metric on here. Um, all of your nominal ODs over here on this side as well. All of your nominal uh, diameters of fasteners with the thread pitch that's associated with that. And then you've got your different classifications, your maximum and minimum uh, pitches right there. And it even gives you this interesting formula here. This is what I've used a lot over the years. Uh, so like if you're machining some random size on a lathe to make a 12 pitch fit for say like a hydraulic part, you come over here to uh, A where it says 12, you take whatever your nominal size is, let's just say it's, uh, let's say three inch, to make it easy, three inch. And uh, so you wanna cut a three inch 12, you would add 0.2737 to that. So when you mic over your, th your thread triangles here, you're gonna be looking for 3.273 as an example. So these things work pretty good. I, I've always enjoyed using these. Uh, thread, the thread wires has just always been a frustrating deal to use. So I like my uh, thread triangles right here.
I almost forgot about my corner radius that I wanted to put in here under the shoulder. So let's go ahead and get that done. No specific size. I just want to add that corner radius there. Let's see. That is a one-eighth wide radius tool, by the way. Just go deep enough so that you know it's cleaning up that corner. Just like that right there. All right, let's go check it, see if it screws into our T-nut. Okay, let's give it a try. Look at that. Good fit. That's a great fit right there. That's at, the, that's at the bottom. It'll actually shoulder out the way I've got this machined right here is that, see that's clearance so that we don't hit this shoulder, but it'll actually pull down on this shoulder before it hits the bottom. So you know what, I'm happy with that. That's a good fit. That is a good fit on that thread. Check that one also. Great, that makes me feel a lot better that we've got that machine to size. So I think like I said, we'll go to the bandsaw, cut off our extra, that way we got a good piece there. And we'll be able to chuck it, finish this side. Cut it off inch and a half long here. That'll give us enough for facing and having plenty to uh, machine that hex there. This is gonna be turned to one and seven eighths. So it looks like about 75, 80,000. So I'll just go ahead and mic it and we'll just turn it. Finish it out. So it'll be 75, 78. I did swap that ins out, in, uh, sorry, insert out to the uh, MPP, oh, I forget what it is now, the 10. It's the finishing insert, what I used. Yeah, I'm right there on it. All right, let's uh, turn this a little bit and then cut some chamfers. All we wanna do is just clean this up. Spot, yep, a few little spots. Take another 10, that should clean it up. And for the back, break that edge. And let's break that one there. Okay, now from there, we'll just go to the mill. We'll use our uh, spacer and uh, mill in our hex. We're set up in the do-all to uh, machine our hex there on the, on the bolt. We're using our new Vertex six inch sim simple spacer. And then I have, this is a two and a half inch tongue alloy. It is the uh, tongue force tri triangular uh, shape inserts there. I'm gonna do a rough cut and then we'll measure it. And then I'll come back and make a final cup to uh, clean it up. I am gonna try a climb cut here and see if, uh, if I don't have a catastrophe and see how this does. This will be our first side. I've just got the, uh, the y-axis is very slightly snug. I'm 
I'm going to be honest with you. I think what's going on right there is I completely forgot to tighten that up. That's, <laughs> boy, that is a, uh, that's a real dumb mistake to make right there. I put it in here with the intentions on tightening it, and I totally forgot. I was setting everything up. So let's see if I can find the, I can't even find the bolt. Come on, man. What's going on here? Yeah, you see it's loose there. So that's why we were getting all that chatter. Let me get this tightened up and I'll, I'll bring you guys back. For some reason I can't, oh, it's a different size. That's why. Is that one right there. Right, let's do this upside down, make it as hard as possible. All right. All right, there we go. Maybe that'll work <laughs> better now. It's probably already cut it a little big. I'm glad I didn't go down to the full, the full depth. So let's just go ahead and see. It's going to be 6, 12, 18, every 60 degrees, right? So we'll just go to 60. See how it does it again. Much better. Much better. Okay. All right. 60, 120. Just trying to be a kind of aggressive with it there and Give it some good uh, feed rate with by hand. All right, that's 180. Uh, 240. Always go 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, which is 36 would be zero. We got our rough cut. We'll go ahead and mic the, uh, the distance across the flats here and see what we have. And then what, whatever we have left here, we'll divide it by two and bring the knee up. So we're at 25, 35, 45, 46, 47. So 47 thousandths divided by two. That should be what, 23, 23 and a half thousandths. That'll be our finished cut. We'll give it a check with our one and five eighths wrench. Good fit. Nice. So we'll do some finishing on this. We'll go back to the lathe and I'm going to cut, you know, a nice bevel or chamfer there on that end to kind of match, uh, you know, the way that it should look there on the end. But other than that, the bolt is pretty well done.
I'm just going to do this by uh, visual reference here. Wanted to get to that diameter. That's looking pretty good right there. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and I'll show you if it show it fitting in the tool post here, our 40 millimeter. And we got a little clearance there. All right. So that's going to work out good. It's looking real nice. So the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and get our spacer machined. This piece right here that fits down inside. Need to go ahead and get it bored. So we'll go back to the lathe and the six jaw, chuck this, bump it true, drill it, bore it to a 40 millimeter clearance, and then that'll be that'll be it for uh, this mounting of the tool post. All right, guys, I think we finally have everything ready to be able to uh, bolt our tool post down to the, to the compound. Here's our spacer that we just bored to 40 millimeter, gave it about 5 thousandths clearance. And it fits down in that counterbore just like that. You have the pointer that's gonna sit on there. And then you have a spring that goes down in this groove, this guy right there that holds the uh, pointer in place. I'm not putting that on right now. All right, we've got our bolt that you saw me machine. Go ahead and put some oil on the threads, a little bit of lubricant there on the shank. And we have a very nice machinist fit <laughs> is what we have right here. You can see it sticking there even though it's got 5 thousandths clearance. So it's starting to get a little snug. You know, y'all saw me screw it down by hand. We've got clearance there. I think what's happening is I've got the shank of the bolt fitted so closely to the uh, bore of the tool post there is that it's just trying to kind of touch those that bore in there and it's getting a little snug but you can take the the wrench and very easily just spin it down just like so i think it probably wouldn't hurt take this back to the lathe and maybe skin five thousandths or so off of the uh the shank of the bolt there just so that it's not such a close snug fit on that but there it goes Snug it down. Man, it looks nice. Here's one of our tool holders right here. We'll go ahead and set one down, set one down in there. And then we have the handle that you use to uh, tighten the cam. It pulls the clamshells in and tightens the holder up against the post. So there it is. Man, that looks good. I really like the way that this turned out, you know, trying to match 
kind of the look of a, of a flange nut. And I even like the machine finish on it. Uh, it's just, it's got a good surface finish there. Gotta love 4140 for always giving you a nice finish there whenever you're machining it. Um, probably have a lot of guys that suggest do the black oxide on there. We may do that later, but I think for now I wanna keep it, keep the machine look. I'll just keep some um, SP350 sprayed on it and keep it looking nice. If it starts getting corroded and rusty later, we'll probably clean it off and go ahead and do the black oxide look to it. All right, so man, this part is done. We've still got a couple more pieces to kind of complete our compound rebuild. So now that this is ready to go, we'll move on to our other two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and remind you guys of what we're gonna be doing here. So we have our lead screw and then we have the lead screw nuts. And we're actually gonna machine both of these pieces new. Okay, I've decided we are gonna be going from we're, we're gonna convert it from the three quarter square thread to an Acme thread. So I've actually purchased a three quarter five Acme tap that we're gonna be using to more easily uh, machine this, this uh, lead screw nut right here. So we'll take a piece of stock, machine this guy completely. We'll tap it for our, for our Acme thread. And then this right here, we're just gonna machine a new one. So this gear just presses off by the way, you got a key in there. So we'll press the gear off. I've got a piece of stress proof that we'll use to machine a brand new lead screw and we'll machine our three quarter five left handed thread on there to match the new nut. So these are going to be, I'm sure that'll be two separate videos that we'll have coming up, make it one video for each and then getting it all put back together and hopefully pretty soon back onto the American pacemaker. I'm, I'm ready to see this guy set up with some uh, material and start making some chips. But these will be two upcoming videos. Hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to get to these guys right there. So that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoy following this little build right here. And come on back. I've got plenty more to do. Hopefully we'll see you on the next project.